So kidney disease is actually fairly common and for the most part I would say diabetes and high blood pressure or hypertension are probably regarded as the number one and two causes, causes of kidney disease in the country simply because so many people have diabetes and high blood pressure. And so a lot of questions that people ask are geared toward, well, how can I prevent kidney disease or how can I stop it from getting worse? And with common things being common with diabetes and high blood pressure, most of the um, patient's disease or treatment plan should be geared toward treating the underlying cause. And so in those cases, it would be get your diabetes under control, get that hemoglobin A1C as close to seven as possible, um, get your blood pressure under control. Usually the target we, we target for is less than 130 over 80, um, or w one less than 140 over 90 if you're a little bit older. A lot of our visits tend to be trying to get your numbers closer to that range because we do find that once your numbers get to that range or once your diabetes and high blood pressure are, are better controlled, your kidney function actually follows suit. So we start to see that um, renal function or kidney function, um, if not improve, at least stabilize. And if it stabilizes, hey, that's okay too, um, as long as it doesn't progress. Another question that a lot of people ask is, is there a specific diet I can follow? which will um, prevent kidney disease or maybe help kidney disease. And again, that sort of goes back to what is causing the kidney problem. And in a lot of cases, high blood pressure is what causes the kidney problem. The best sort of thing I tell people is to try and have a low sodium diet or a low salt diet um, that can actually probably do nothing but help the situation. And that usually entails uh, less than 1,500 or less than 2,000 milligrams of sodium per day. Now, the average American has something between like 4,000 to 5,000 milligrams of sodium per day. So as you can imagine, if you are eating like the average American, trying to cut it down in half or even less than half of what you're typically used to is pretty daunting or pretty overwhelming and just uh, obviously not very easy. As far as lifestyle modifications for trying to help or stabilize kidney function, diet and exercise is always a safe answer. It doesn't just help with kidneys, it helps with so many other um, organ systems or overall health. The, as far as supplements go, it's always safer to check with your provider to see what supplements might be okay. There's a lot of things out there that interestingly adversely affect kidney function. Uh, things that you can buy over the counter, like ibuprofen, Aleve, uh, Motrin, those things aren't necessarily the greatest for kidneys and uh, in fact a lot of patients I see have kidney disease related to common things like that that you see over the counter. A lot of herbal supplements while they're really great to maintain good health sometimes can have some adverse effect on kidneys so I think as far as um, supplements, over-the-counter medications, it's always great to check with your provider to make sure that it's safe for whatever your condition might be. I think the primary target that I like to have with each patient is for them to go away knowing that we're a team and I will do what I can. I will encourage and do what I can to help them make any lifestyle modi modifications that they need to do. And in the end, it, it's a team approach to solidifying or stabilizing their kidney function.